We are so glad to have you here again. Thank you for joining us once more. Um, our topic is actually today that I'll be discussing is actually understanding dropshipping. So this is a little bit more advanced course where we I actually cover the topic about you know the secrets of getting orders from scratch for beginners, uh, from people who starting from scratch, uh, and some tips as well so that to actually to help you to be able to achieve your first dropshipping order in perhaps in two weeks, let's say. Now, uh, if you remember, my name is Melvin, and I'm actually the product marketing manager at Shopline Malaysia. And um, there will be two topics that I'll be covering today, two different separate sessions that I'll be covering. So the first part of the course is actually um, chapter one, the secrets of dropshipping management, and also um, a little bit about managing your website. So here are the, the subtopics that I'll be covering uh, along the way. And for the second part or the second uh, chapter is actually you'll know a little bit more about uh, Facebook uh, advertisements, uh, some of the tips that I'll be covering on how you can create a Facebook ad, and also how do you do setting for it, for your Facebook ad to actually you know the purpose to actually attract uh, drop shipping orders. Okay, I'll also be including a hand to hand or teaching on how how to actually do do one. For example, just to give you a run through on how you can actually uh, set up your own. Facebook ad on your by yourself, okay. And um, at the end of the course, there will be a um, questionnaire that I will need you to help me to complete. Which, upon completion of the questionnaire, similar to the first session that you did, uh, you will be actually be giving you the dropshipping frequently asked question or FAQ guide for free. And we we'll also be able to set up uh, an appointment with you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one guiding session with our dropshipping colleague, uh, colleagues who are in charge of the project. And we all, they will be actually be able to help you to evaluate your products and also have a look at a quick review on your, your web store and also your product page and etc. And if you have any questions about advertising, feel free to, to reach out to us and ask us for that. Okay. All for the uh, uh, reminder is also for the, uh, so to actually qualify for the one-on-one -on -one session, the one-on-one -on -one guiding session. Um, all we need you actually to do, I think in your previous assignment, your task that you need to complete, is actually just to have your website, your basic website setting up, and then we'll be able to guide you through from there. Okay, so now, back, yeah, back to the course. Uh, this course is expected to last about an hour. It's a little bit more content than before, but I'm sure this will be valuable for you and it will be very good for you after listening. And if you really take the action for it, I'm very confident that you actually have the Opportunity to make your first uh, to receive your first order. So, all right, let's let's begin. So, the first top chapter is uh, secret drop shipping management and website building. These are the subtopics that I'll be covering today. Okay, so the first thing is um, when you actually operate an online business, what you need to know or you need to be you need to be aware of is actually to understand how your consumer shop. So, what you need to know about online business is actually the consumer online shopping journey. Like how do what does the journey they take to actually perform the online shopping? All right, and some of the questions that you know um, that they it pops up on the, that you need to know, or it pops up on the, the consumer or the buyer's mind is actually number one. For example, what they like to buy, you know, what the, what do the buyers like to buy? What do the customers like to buy? What do the customers? What are they looking for? What what, what do they look for? You need to know what they are looking for, and what would they like to know about? Which means that. You know, in terms of your product, what would they like to know about the product? What kind of information that you want to provide for them? How do you how to how do they shop? Where 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 can they shop for it? How do they buy it? And lastly, most importantly, is how do they actually make the decision? How do they make decide that they want to buy the product? So these are the key things that you always should have on your mind. All right. So let's look at the short video over here on the right. This is probably very um, uh, familiar to you to most people who are social. People who are all use social media all the time. So this is actually uh, an advertisement we you often see on Facebook. So when actually a buyer or customer is actually interested in this, he will actually he sees this information, he will click on it, and it will bring them to the video on the right here, which is actually the product page, and they will be able to see all the, the contents, the materials. They can even add to cart, and if they actually decide to buy it, that's a payment option to choose, a delivery method for them. And also a buy now button where they can quickly purchase the product and make payment for it. Okay, so that's on the basic, the fundamentals. So now in the process of going through all of that, you know, it's important that you actually we actually deep dive 
into the consumer shopping journey because only by understanding the consumer online shopping journey you'll be able to know you, you will know how to do a better business because you actually um, extend yourself put yourself in their shoes and understand a little bit more about them okay so now there are three key stages to actually uh, receive an order from scratch as a beginner so they, these are the three points that three steps uh, stages that I actually want you to pay attention to which is actually number one discover uh, which it means I'll go through what I'll explain to you what it means later discover consider and also closing repurchase is, is important but uh, we will not discuss about this, but it's all it's more on these three stages, three key stages in this one, okay? Now, so what are the specific, you know, tasks or considerations that you need to make that corresponds to the three key stages that I've just mentioned, you know, discover, consider, and closing, all right? So in, in, this, in the stage where I need to discover, so discover is very important when, you know, um, things such as like product selection, you need to choose a potential product that would actually make sense uh, to make people to buy. You need to choose, you need to make an attractive advertisement in order to actually you know to create using materials to create a very attractive advertisement in order to to market it to the right people at the right place. You know, so you need to know where you want to put them. Okay. Then the next stage is actually once you have done all this. That's where you actually move on to consider. So things that you, uh, the customer will actually be on the consideration stage once they have actually discovered the product, they are attracted to it. They will be, they will reach the point where they will have to make the consideration, such as you know if the price is too ridiculous, no one's going to play place an order. Um, you also all have to make sure that your website and your product page and the details are complete and is attractive enough to capture their attention. Then and make them to consider it, all right. And also, if necessary, we need to do a good job of customer service because customers always have questions to ask you sometimes. So of course, but then again, if you have a very complete website or product page with details, customer service shouldn't be an issue because they already collect, the, they already have the fundamental or the essential information that they need. But it's always good, to, you know, if you actually have somewhere where they can ask you questions about it, or they can reach out to you. So the more detail, complete, complete details that you actually provide, the, the cost of actually you know, reaching out to the customer is lower and stuff like that. So if you think of it, um, once that is done, now it's not just about, you know, like, yeah, I, I got them to actually discover my product. They, they are attracted to it. They like price, you know, they, they saw everything is good. They have already enough information. The last step is a little bit on more on the, you know, the administration side where you need to make sure that you actually close the deal so when you actually want to close the deal at the end of the day you need to make payment for example so you want to make sure you have your payment payment solution uh, right up in in a, in a most secure way and it's very obvious to them for them to pick an option that they can actually pick from a logistic that's very um, easy for them to choose in a sense that you know logistics maybe it's very convenient so you pr perhaps you know maybe free shipping and uh, you have the shipping method that delivers within certain time. They know about it. Um, also, in terms of perhaps like operational wise, like your website speed, you need to make sure that it's secure and it's, it's, it's optimized for customers to browse through. Not too many, it's not too complex, right? And also the entire order process in general by itself. So now so several things that, you know, if you can see here, like, you know, if a customer doesn't really patronize or doesn't care about it, it's probably because of an advertising part of aspect of your discovery stage where you know you need to pay more attention in terms of perhaps selecting the right material for advertising or it could be the product the product itself you selected the wrong product so if you're stuck in this stage you need to know like oh okay i'm here on the stage on the discovery stage now if it's on if the customer consider it but did not place and they actually went through the stage where they saw the advertisement they kind of lot like the product. They went to the page itself, but then they didn't actually place an order after visiting your website. So it could be something to do with your pricing, or it could be something that you know within your website, the contents like the product page or the product details is not attractive enough, or they don't get the they don't get the answers that they want because when they ask you questions, perhaps you know uh, they didn't get the answer they want, or within the product page itself, the details are not enough. All right. So if they, if they actually you know like they reach out to you, they are interested in consideration, etc. But then uh, sometimes the customer actually gives up on the final stage, which is the closing part, right? So 
perhaps it is because you know they actually put onto the shopping cart you know and your, your payment option is not there for them to choose or there is not a, the logistic logistics is not able to fulfill the the product shipment so these are the parts where you need to also pay attention to it's a little bit more on the administrative side but you know it's important in general what i'm saying here is you need to know where you are standing at in terms of the stages where the problems happen and that is where you are able to actually make a specific consideration and tackle these problems all right so now uh, let me move on to the next part uh, after you have already have the basic understanding of consumer shopping journey what we need to understand is actually what is the best dropshipping model for people who are just starting or which we choose to start right now for beginners so uh, you may wonder how dropshipping can be divided into different models yes it is it is true because if you actually look in deeper we can see that there's four different we've identified four different type of dropshipping models and the reason why we are sharing this is also to let everyone know that drop shipping model is is most suitable for people who are just starting okay um, and to ensure that everyone's drop shipping business actually has a chance to you know make an order from it so these four models are uh, how we actually base on them or how we actually evaluate is actually through two different aspects. One is from the product aspect and the other one is actually coming from the market aspect. So from the product side, you can see there's actually two different criteria. One is actually a single product, um, which is actually focusing on one item only. And the other one is actually the vertical or categories. Okay, so um, now from what you probably questioning yourself like what is this vertical category means if you're unfamiliar in e-commerce uh, okay so first off a uh, single product means a single item let's say I'm selling um, a USB cable so I'm using a I'm selling a charging USB cable for charging uh, my mobile devices so uh, you, a USB type C so that's one product that's one item all right so um, under vertical a category which is a multiple what it means is that maybe I'm a person does drop shipping but I'm selling different kind of products for example but under the same kind of industry like you know um, electronic devices let's say and uh, electronic devices and cables so within this electronic um, devices and cable I may be selling my type C USB cable I may be selling my USB 3 cable I may be selling a hot disk, I may be selling a pen, a flash drive, a USB flash drive. So that the entire, all these products falls under this vertical category itself. Okay. So on the market side, on the market point of view, is that, you know, you can, there's either you can do a single market, which is focusing, you know, Malaysian market. You're only targeting the Malaysian market. Or you could be looking into a multi-market segment, which is, Perhaps we in e-commerce we call it e a cross border, where you're not just only focusing on targeting customers, for example, in one market, but also across different markets. Like for example, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore. So you focus on a variety of different markets. Okay, so if you think of these criteria from these two aspects, and also these two criteria under each of the aspects, this actually gives you uh, four different variation of a dropshipping model. Okay, each model actually caters to different people, but what we actually think is actually most suitable for you as a beginner, people who are just starting, is actually if you focus on single product and you actually focus on single market. All right, so as you can see here, A, which is single product, single market, B, single product, multiple markets, vertical uh, categories, focusing only on one market, or vertical categories focusing into different markets. So there's four different options. But our suggestion is that, you know, the most suitable for you is actually, uh, if you're starting only, it's actually this one. You focus on one product and also one market because it gives you time to concentrate and you do things well. So even with like very limited knowledge of e-commerce or you're just starting, this model gives you more time and it doesn't waste too much energy. You know, your head doesn't go around and ask a lot of questions. Oh my God, I have to focus on so many different products within this category. Which one is good? You know, so choose focus only on a single product and focusing on targeting a product a market sorry that you're familiar with so once you have mastered all these uh, the zero to one uh, a which is a zero to one and you have actually gotten an order maybe it would be easier you can also consider other models as well like uh, for example if you already know like you're good in this product you're, you're really you, you've got a lot of orders for this 
you can always try out mar the other markets as well. Now, of course, bear in mind like multiple market uh, is, is a little bit different because each market has a different characteristics. Uh, perhaps, for example, like different currency, different product, uh, acquired taste for different products, and also uh, logistics. So there are things that you need to experiment. So that's why we suggest you start off with this, then before you proceed with the other ones. The more you actually explore, the more you try it, the better you get, the more chances of uh, the risk you actually take will be lesser if you actually want to really explore um, cross-border and also multiple products range, for example, all right? So today, uh, we've, I've mentioned, we actually focus on the single product plus single market. Uh, so how do we go about this? All right, so in, in the conventional e-commerce process is uh, a customer will actually first see the advertisement, then uh, go to a page, a website page, a home page, and then look for the product, and then add to cart, and then check out, right? So there's a total of about five steps. But with this model, where you focus only on a single product and a single market, you actually could shorten it to a little bit shorter, <laughs> into three steps, which is actually uh, based on the stage that I've actually showed you. Discover, consider, and closing. For, ex for example, if you actually, in the discovery stage, to actually optimize this, you could use Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, uh, Facebook advertisement as a way to actually help you on this stage. And um, in terms of considering, you can use Shopline uh, web store or website to actually you know, optimize the page using the catch-up feature, bring it over, optimize the page, make sure the details are clear, and then you know, let the customer check out, add to cart, and then check out. So instead of five steps that you, you know, let the customer to walk by themselves to go online and visit the website and go through the product page, you cut them short, you actually advertise it, you actually let them consider it, and then you close them. Okay, so um, now in the next one is I want to share with you is actually the five steps on how we can quickly get orders from customers. Let's say within two weeks, let's say, just if you actually put in the effort to try it. So these are the five steps that you need to uh, pay attention to in order for you to tackle the customer shopping journey. So the first one is actually uh, product selection, selecting the right product, create, optimize your product page and details. Now, once you have done that, make sure that your, your creation and optimization of your website, things on your website are, are, are covered, are, are, are well done. And then you also need to make sure you uh, production and also optimization of your advertising materials, like the things that you want to use for advertising. Then the final one is actually if you to, to launch it and then optimize the ad along the way. All right, so continue to discover, solve, improve, improve problems along these five steps. I'm sure if you actually follow the stages, you'll definitely see more orders coming in. Now, the, before I actually officially enter these five specific steps, let me summarize the three key takeaways that everyone should remember. There are three key steps that you know a customer actually takes, which is he discovers, he considers, he closes, all right? And the best dropshipping model for a beginner is actually single product, focus only one on one single product, focus on one market, and based on those key steps, you can use, for example, Facebook, then you can actually optimize your website product page and the details. Then you close the customer by giving them options that makes them easy to, to pay you. And the five key steps to receive an order of quickly getting your orders actually, you know, going through the stages of product selection, uh, product detail page, then your website, optimize your website, optimizing your advertising materials, and actually truly launch your advertising. So this is what you need to know as like the stage that the customer actually goes through. This is what you need to focus on. And these are the things that perhaps you can work on towards. And this is more operational in the sense that the steps that you need to take individually. And I will actually go through in details each of them to explain to you a little bit more on this. All right, so the first one is actually select the product. So I've already discussed this before. Uh, this is a very, very important step. So today I will actually just give you a brief review about it. Uh, I won't go into two details. But um, because we actually covered this in the first set part of the, the webinar, okay? So now I'm gonna give you go through the selection stage, the five key steps. So this is a, a USB cable, magnetic USB cable for fast charging, okay? And it's actually very, uh, it's durable and it's actually very flexible. So um, how we actually choose this, the logic that we actually choose this, we, we, we have selected 15 
products that were selected for selection. And then if you actually brainstorm it and you, you think about it, there'll be three to four selections that you actually you, you actually narrow down. So my, my, my suggestion is when you're actually brainstorming and how you want to come to the point where you only have focusing on one product is you, you can brainstorm, like look into what people like and et cetera. Like remember the first webinar I've covered, like uh, it can be based on your lifestyle, it could be based on your profession, it could be you observing what people actually like you know, surrounding you. Okay, so you you know for for this one we actually you can ask you know for example like to come to this point of view is you can ask people several people you know randomly ask them if this product can be sold, and in the end it's actually completely up to you if you want to decide. And sometimes if you know whether it's good, you you wouldn't know until you actually try it, right, or make a decision about it. So uh, on the contrary, you may think that you know like um, this product is a little bit tricky, but then. My advice is actually if you have to try it first. So the reason how we actually come up to this case, this product is actually because this, if you think of it, this charging cable is a very consumer-based and relatable product. Um, it is very prone to loss or damage. You know, people actually, it's very consumer-based in the sense that um, people buy it all that and most times. You know, like maybe six months once, and because it is, it is not too expensive. You know, you, you, it's very prone for the consumer to actually lose it. Or maybe even ban it or damage it. So it's a very consumer based, you know, it's very fast. It's kind of like mid to fast moving product. So, it, and it's a re very relatable product where everyone needs to have one. You know, one person may have multiple cables of this. And it is very uh, interesting and it's novel in a way that you can see that the product itself is quite creative. Um, it's not like a very typical cable. Uh, it's quite interesting where is that you can actually fold it. You can really easily find this kind of product. Um, and you can see the demographics that you do a little bit of research, you find that people who are between the age of um, 18 to 35 years old will purchase this product online. And people don't mind waiting. It's not like a super urgent product that people need it, like, um, you know, for example, like food or something like that. But it's very acceptable for 18 to 30 days logistic. Now, supplier cost is only 2966 So assuming that it's actually 2966 if you plus this, plus the shipping, when the expected market retail price that you can sell is actually around 60 ringgit. And if you look at the reviews, uh, it's actually 4.7 stars. People rate it 4.7, and it's actually more than 600 plus orders. All right, so this is just a quick review of how you actually look into the product. In the previous webinar have covered more details about this, but this is just to give you a quick review. All right, the second step is how to make a high quality and high conversion product detail page. How do you create and you know make your product page interesting and with complete details and etc. Okay, and yeah, so how do you create a product page with details that can generate a high conversion rate? Now, there's a couple of steps. So the first one is actually correct. It's actually the pricing. So pricing is very important. You need to be able to set a suitable price, usually about one to two times the price, the, the price of your the supplier price, uh, double the pricing. Because you know, if you want to do advertising, remember you also have to do advertising. It has a cost to it, and uh, general advertising, in, uh, you know, the return ratio that the turnover that I'm suggesting is, if you invest one ringgit, you know, you should always get two ringgit back. So that's a ratio of one to two. If you don't miss this, that bit, you don't kind of you know wait, make too much money on it, right? So try when you set a price that you want to sell to a customer. Try to make it uh, double, or at least a little bit more than double of the product supplier price, for example, and you actually have a profit from that. So if you can see on the left here, uh, our, the purchase price plus the shipping is that you buy from your product supplier is actually uh, 2966 because it's actually including the shipping already. But then you can actually sell it at a retail price of 58. Now, not, it's not just about selling a single product. Maybe what you can do to make it more interesting and you want people to actually buy your product, your product more, it could be also, you know, like having bundle prices. Like, you know, you buy two, you buy one for 58 ringgit, but then you buy two, you buy it for 20, 98 ringgit, which is double. So if people actually buy more from you, you know. So you can do something like this. And you can see that, you know, uh, you make it creative, a little bit more attractive, where in terms of design, like free shipping, perhaps you can put an emoji or an icon over here, make the text a little bit more bigger, uh, use a different color for the pricing, make it attractive, so people actually look at it and they actually like, you know, it, it attracts them. Okay, but of course, some. so do remember that sometimes if you, if you like the price is not well, it doesn't 
quite catered to the market. You can always adjust the price. Um, try not to adjust it to lower it too low, because if you if you know because if you actually lower it too low, you have don't forget you have advertising spend. And actually, if you if you actually issue, you get the order, you issue it up, you know more the the price of the product. You can actually if if you set the fundamental pricing at the very beginning itself as a high price, there's always space for you to do trial and error down the line, right? Yeah. So that's how you can actually do uh, pricing. Second is you need to be able to uh, have a clear uh, call to action button that you want to you want it to appear on your page all the time. Because when a customer actually wants to buy it, so what I mean by call to action button is actually a buy now button like this one here, all right? So you want to make sure that th this button is always here and you, because it actually prompts them to, it's always visible and it prompts them to make the purchase whenever when they're browsing through the page, okay? And you don't want to have too many distractions around, with too many um, unnecessary information around the page as long as you want to make sure that they, you're clear to the point you, you have the right information on here for example like this and you have a buy now button for them to pick on. So number three is actually uh, you need to have a high quality uh, product picture. We always emphasize this many times. If you look on the picture here on the left and on the right, uh, which one do you think you were actually most likely to buy? Now, I, for me, I think, you know, if I actually see a product picture like this, this one on the left, the one on the right, the one on the left doesn't give me, the, doesn't jive a little bit with me because, you know, it's, it's kind of plain. It doesn't have any kind of key information on it. It's very vague. You know, on the, on the right, I think most people will actually want to buy the one the product on the right because it has more, it has a title to it. It has a subtitle. Uh, it has key, really key information, and it has a super nice background to it. So consumers always remember that they always look at product visuals and appearance first. So if your pictures are not good enough, no one wants or will actually continue to scroll down on your page. So make sure the first few main product photos are always high quality, okay? If you want to know how like to upload a product, um, a good quality product on your ShopLine uh, website, you can always, uh, we have a FAQ, a tutorial. You can always reach us out on our WhatsApp group and we'll be able to teach you on how you can upload. We have a YouTube video where you can follow through. Okay, and number four is actually you need to have a complete product introduction page uh, that clearly tells you about your product values and your proposition. You know, for example, like if you're selling a mobile cable, uh, sorry, first is a shipping price. You know, you want to let them know is this including of your free shipping or not? Or what is, is there any ongoing promotion? What's the special price for it? Uh, you also want to make sure, like for example, like if you're selling a mobile cable, what kind of phone is it compatible on? What are the cable um, the description about the cable? What values? You also want to tell your customers what are the values that the this product brings? How can how can this product actually help them to solve the problem? And why why should they buy this? Because if they buy this, you know, uh, oh my cables don't get tangled up very fast. It's it's very flexible and it's uh, very convenient. It doesn't break really good very fast. So these kind of values that you want to portray and give to your customers. And like, for example, like this as well, like a uh, very strong uh, wire core, charging is definitely more stable, when it's charged, it's not so hot. So these are more on the quality side. So not just about like solving the problems, but also describing how well the product quality is. So you actually build the confidence in, in for your customers or your buyers. So if you cannot tell your customers this information clearly, you know, they might just, you know, not visit your shop and um, they will, might not just buy your product. Number five is you need to also give the confidence, further add on the confidence by providing testimonials. You know, by doing so, you know, for example, like reviews, you can actually have reviews on your website, um, and also, you know, like, uh, or you, it doesn't have to be an actual review, like um, one that's on the website itself. You can also have screenshots. Screenshots can always work. You know, you can have a separate website page, for example. So as long as you have uh, testimonials and reviews, it, it kind of helps the customer to have an established sense of uh, a security. Okay, and not only just that, but you also want to have like your website security certification. You know, you want to if you work with Shopline, we have our uh, footer that comes with um, that with our security certification and so on. So you want to make sure all these information are on your website so that people actually feel safe while browsing through uh, your website and they can trust you. So uh, when you, you might ask where you can download this, um, no worries. 
you, if you if you have any, you want to know how you can actually download, for example, like the payment gateway, uh, um, sorry, uh, payment card network uh, logo, or even our, our SSL logo and stuff like that. You can actually go to uh, let us know later at the question after you fill up questionnaire, or you can ask us on our website, uh, our WhatsApp group. So we're able to give you the, the, the FAQ on how you can put this on your website. Okay. And we also give you in the FAQ uh, guide as well, the FAQ, so you have this access to this. Now, number six is actually consumers absolutely love discounts and choices when they love to have choices when they actually go sh they shop on your website. So if you actually give them a reason, for example, like you know, um, giving them free shipping, giving them promotion or bundle in terms of bundle, this gives them, uh, they're more willing to actually to buy from you and give, this gives them more reason to buy more from you actually. And you know, when they actually hear from their friends, they, oh my God, I actually purchased this product and automatically it gives me a discount, a bundle discount. I, I bought it, it's a rare discount, so I actually buy it. You know, it stimulates more consumption and more purchase from your customers. All right, so now the another one is actually um, to give you a quick look on the website created by our, one of our, um, our merchants two weeks ago. So we have permission, we actually show it. So some of the orders that I've actually been issued, uh, bought in a very short time, you can actually make it, I'll just show you this demo. So here you go. So this is actually very uh, clear and very straight to the point where you can actually see all the inform the necessary information. And you know, she, the, the, the merchant also included like uh, videos, like GIF videos that you can actually demonstrate how, how does the product actually looks like. So you actually give a visual feel to the customer and more you know, uh, relatable uh, point of view that so that the customer actually trusts it and you can actually purchase the product. So you have a lot of good information over here. And then they can automatically um, purchase the product and check out from here by now, right? Okay, so that's just a quick example that I'll show you. So make it real, make it lively so it doesn't look very you know, plain and rigid. Make your page look like you're really sharing a, good, a great product with your customers or your buyers. Okay, so in terms, uh, so what is a good conversion rate that you think about? Like just to give you a reference, um, a reference data point, if you have a reference table. So if you actually look at it, so if you actually put up your product, so actually, if people actually go to your product page and they actually make a purchase, if you actually have 1.75% people who come to your website and actually purchase it, so um, I say 100 customers, you have one out of 1.75%. That is actually a great C, and if actually 1.85%, that's great B, and 2.8%, like out of 100 customers, that 2.8% actually of the customers come to your website and they purchase it, it could be it's actually ranked as an excellent as A. All right. And uh, if you think about outstanding, it's eight percent. So if you have hundred customers coming on your website, eight customers actually purchase your product, and you know after seeing the advertisement and actually they saw your you know you optimize your product page, that's really really good. Okay, but of course, uh, whenever you're just starting, don't worry too much about this. Just as long as you put in the effort and you try it and try to get uh, at least a, a score of a C or a B. Is already good enough to just kick start and to try it. So you keep trying on this. Don't worry about getting uh, outstanding rate. All right. So the next one is actually um, how you can actually complete uh, optimize your website. So earlier on was about your product page and the product details and etc. Now it's about how you can optimize, create and optimize your website. So how can I create complete a functional dropshipping website within two hours? Let's say. All right. So, uh, so now to create and have an optimize a good website, the main remember the main purpose of the website is actually why do you want to have one? It's actually to help you to collect money, and it helps you to actually track your orders. And not only that, you want to be able to actually have open a Facebook advertising account because when you actually have you want to use a Facebook advertising account, you want your customers to go to your website to look at the product. You need a website. Right, so you need a website to be able to set it up, and then in general, also you want to be able to manage your orders. So to complete this goal, your website only needs to um, ideally complete these five points that I'm looking at, right? Like you can see here, uh, which is actually the logo of your company. 
you know, and also um, a payment a payment solution that's on on your website so that you know your customers can directly click on buy now and check out and go through a payment gateway and make the payment instead of you know online bank transfer, which is a real hassle. You can do that, but it's a real hassle for you to do a lot of tracking. But that's why we suggest that like, if you have a good payment gateway that's on your website, it really helps you to optimize um, logistics. You want to make sure you have um, logistics settings right on your website. You want to be able to set it correctly so that the customers don't go through a hassle. You know, a lot of this, a lot of manual back and forth and etc. You want to have a good landing page, a website landing page. You also want to be make make sure that you have a good website policy plus terms and conditions. Now, uh, these are the five modules that uh, aspects that I want to tell you, but just to give you a recommendation on how you can do it. For example, if you really just starting, you don't have your own logo. There's a website that we can recommend, which is Canva. Canva is like a, it's actually free for use. You can actually free, but they also have premium plans as well if you need so much more design. But the advantage is actually with Canva. You just it's very easy you just have to create an account and within 10 minutes you can choose so many different designs that's free to you and you can design a logo very fast like for example like these ones here and so many choices for me to pick from so here's the link to canva so if you want to do a logo you can use canva now a uh, recommended payment gateway that we would suggest is actually um a stripe so if you actually have stripe you want to use stripe uh stripe has support it supports credit card debit card and local Malaysia online banking, FBX, which is like your main bank to you, CMB clicks and so on. And uh, if you need to set it up, just let us know. Like um, on, on the WhatsApp group, I will be able to tell you all the steps on um, how you can actually set it up for Stripe for your website. Now, don't forget also, we also have our own uh, Shopline payment coming as well. So stay tuned for that. We'll let you know if there's any more information coming up that's to be launched soon. But definitely for now, we, we, we have Stripe already, and this is a good payment gateway that you can use. Now, for logistics, based on the logistics option, uh, you need to be able to set it up already because you actually take the product from AliExpress, remember? So generally, uh, our advice is to choose a product that actually has AliExpress standard shipping of 15 to 30 days. And recommended is actually if they already the product is already including free shipping. So when, when you actually buy, look at the product supplier costs, the free shipping is already included inside the selling uh, inside the, the uh, product supplier cost. So then it's easier for you to actually sell it. All right. And um, website policies, terms and conditions. This is very crucial. It's very important. Um, you also want to make sure that you have to, in order to get the proper the trust of your customers, you don't want your customers to feel like your website is a scam, for example. Right. So make sure you have a good privacy policy. Uh, you have a good shipping fulfillment, fulfillment uh, shipping information or policy, and a payment method which is described as, as to how you collect payment from your customers purchasing from your website. Now, don't worry about this. This is a little bit technical, but if you actually fill out the questionnaire at the end of the course, um, remember we said we'll give you FAQ. We will actually provide you a template. Just reach out to us, and we'll be able to let you know on what this is. We'll give you a template for it. Okay. All right, so um, the other fifth one is actually the landing page. So remember, we talked about having a good landing page. Now, this is an example of a good landing page that we are looking at. So you want to make sure, number one, is you have your logo on the top of your website. All right? So you, because you don't want it to look, look like very plain, you always want to make sure that you have a logo on the top. And uh, you want to make sure you have uh, basic photographs. Like, for example, this is a banner, a hit banner that you want to put on your website and several other visual features as well so so that it, it doesn't make like you know it doesn't make your website look like a scam website you know it's unpleasant for the customers when they go in and look oh my god why does this website look so weird you don't want that that kind of experience so you want to be able to come up with certain visuals and also make sure you have a logo so it's it really is you know, you're actually a merchant selling something you can and they can trust you so there are a couple of advice, uh, suggestions that we can give for uh, pictures like you're looking for free galleries of images that you want to use um, you can go to pexels.com or unsplash.com. So this is where you can actually find uh, banners that you can actually use. Or you can also go to Canva where Canva also has uh, several banners that you can use on. Um, our suggested, uh, if you want to know how you can upload these on your website, um, feel free to reach out to our WhatsApp group that we already created and we'll be able to tell you the exact size of the right banner that you can upload on your website and how it should, uh, how can you do it. So our team is really, to, really happy to help you, or you can use a live chat. 
Okay, so that's pretty much about uh, um, the, 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 the stage street where we have reached the point where you know create and optimize your website. How do you select a product? And uh, how do you optimize your product page and details of your product page? And what, what are the things that you want to make sure that your website already has? So now uh, moving on to the second chapter, which is actually the secrets of dropshipping order. And remember, I've mentioned I'll be showing you some, uh, talking about some tips on how you can create Facebook ads and what are the settings that you need to do to, to start to kickstart for you to target dropshipping orders. Okay, so uh, just give me about a, a minute break. I'll be right back with you. Just give me a few moments to prepare myself and I'll be able to continue the session. All right, so just give me a minute. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, um, welcome back, everyone. Um, I'll be going through now the second chapter of the uh, secrets of dropshipping orders, and this this particular topic. We'll be focusing a little bit more about Facebook. All right. So, um, now remember that you know uh, the reason why we, we talk about Facebook is because let's imagine let's imagine you 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 are opening a store you open a shop right so you open a shop in Kuala Lumpur in the city um, let's say in the, in the city or outskirts of the city so you, you open your own shop and you spend a lot of money you know spend a lot of money on renting the shop but you didn't do any advertisement or you know you didn't advertise your shop to other people so other people don't know about it you know but then again um, yeah people around your neighborhood they know about your shop they come into your shop and etc but other people from the other parts of the city, they don't know about your shop, so right? Because you didn't advertise it. So it's kind of a waste if you just only target the people around you, around your surrounding neighborhood, but you also need to be able to target other people to know about your shop so that people around Malaysia or even Kuala Lumpur or around Malaysia, the whole Malaysia stuff can know about it. So this is exactly the same truth for online business. You wanna be able to advertise and let more people know about you and you know, perhaps, People from different regions and different uh, districts, or people of different age age groups, for example, have the opportunity to to see your store, to, to see your products, right? So, um, before actually, I officially, you know, you might have the question about like, you know, which advertising platform should I use? There are so many different platforms, right, with different characteristics and types to choose from. And um, the reason why we choose, uh, we suggest Facebook. And why Facebook is is because it has a wide target audience. Um, there's a huge, large number of users over the past 15 years, ever since it started back in 2005. So there are lots of users on Facebook. Billions of users actually receive a lot of advertising exposure every month. So imagine people coming on Facebook and always see advertisements every month, on a daily basis, every day. So on average, most important as well, audience actually spend at least an hour per day browsing through Facebook as you know for example as compared to Instagram which is more targeting to peers but Facebook also has so many other different contents and because of that the audience audience actually spend quite a long time to on Facebook you know and obviously all along the line over the years imagine the accumulated amount of data and customer data that you can have these are absolutely extremely high commercial value you know because at the moment for example like um, you know when why why Facebook ads are more accurate to attract audiences? It's also because for, imagine like a customer registers their account on Facebook, the information they fill in, the pages they click on, and the interactions of their friends, you know, talking to their friends, etc. It helps Facebook. Facebook algorithms helps to understand what are their preferences and personality, right? And together with Instagram, because of Instagram is also owned by Facebook, a subsidiary of Facebook, it also helps it to understand the cross-platform behavior of the people. So it's kind of like I would say it's like an 
a complete advertising system that if you really want to embark on e-commerce or dropshipping, it's a, a platform that you really need to emphasize and try it out yourself and putting effort to actually understand it. Okay. Even, for example, research also has proven that 96% of community uh, platforms believe that Facebook is the most effective way of how you can, you know, choice among like uh, putting up advertisements. So no denial that the data has already proven Facebook is definitely necessary and you need to do it. Now, now the fifth step is production and how, how do you create or optimize your advertising materials? So if how do you buy or create an ad on Facebook if you have never put any Facebook ads or you know have a little bit uh, any experience about it? My teaching today will show you how you can quickly learn and set up and uh, how you can also set up a uh, Facebook advertising, the settings and you know this step can show you how you can do. It. Just a simple demo, okay? But first you must have number one. Is actually, uh, let me just go through this first. How do you build a high conversion advertising material? So number one is your advertising must be eye-catching. It must be able to create a desire, like create a desire for the customers to actually say, oh, I, oh, this is cool, I want to get it. And the, the material also has to be trustable. It has to be able to get trust. And it creates a call to action where it, it leads the customer to actually make the action to click on it and actually purchase it, okay? So these are some of the suggestions, just suggestional tools that we suggest to you that you can produ produce materials, for example, like using Canva. If you're if you're you're using looking into graphic layout, you can use Photor as well. Photor also very functions very similar. If you want to create like video clips, there's Viva Video, there's also InShot that you can use. So these are some tools that you can use along the way. All right. Now the first first of all. Um, I'll be using the charging cable. So you must have a Facebook page. Number one, most importantly, is you need to have a Facebook page. Um, otherwise, I will show you how you can actually do it. So first of all, is the consideration for creating an advertising material. Now, this is how an example that I'm showing now is that this is an example that uh, we actually, uh, one of our merchants actually did. So this is how it looks like where this is an ad, a sponsored ad that appears on Facebook, and this is the description of the, uh, the product. And then also it has a link. So there's a short URL external link that you can actually have here. Okay, and then you also, she also included a short video that's about short within 30 seconds. So it's very clear and very concise, and it's very clear for them to actually have a look at. Right, so all vice versa, the other way around, it's also the other picture here you can see. Uh, it's a short URL external link and also the number of words, you know, that is actually within three lines. So they make it a little bit simple and you can, they also include the title at the, here and a link, a button link, that's a call to action button. Link. So this is how uh, some of the considerations that you should do when you create an advertising material for a Facebook ad. Just to give you an advice, I will not, I will show you now and later on how you can do something similar to this, but this is just to give you an example. Now, also consider you want to make sure that the, um, the text requirement of the, the advertisement is as follows. Um, so rem uh, Facebook has, has works in, ads work in a way that, you know, um, so you can type the text, but then within the picture itself. So within the picture itself, um, you, there's also a limitation where, you know, you must make sure that it, it's only, there's only about 20% of the text over there. Because if it's too much of uh, text on the the picture itself, like for example, the advertising banner, um, is actually considered as a, as a text, part of the text advertisement. So it's a little bit, uh, it will not try to promote your ad too much if you actually put it this way. So to check, to give you a quick um, tool, to look, you can actually go to this link, facebook.com, at tools, text underscore overlay. Once you click on it, you should be able to, um, it's like a testing. It's like a testing page where you can drop in your picture, and it tells you about your image text ratings. For example, like uh, is your image text okay? If it's, if your image text is low, uh, your ads may not reach. Uh, it may be slightly lower than normal, but if you have too much of text, like for example, like a medium to high range level of text on your image, your ad, the reach might be lower. Okay, so there are some limitations to. Uh, 
um, having an, an image with text on it. So we would suggest that you actually use keywords, words that actually make sense. Well, I'm going to show you like a sample here. I'll put this picture here. Upload this. Ah, there you go. So um, this is okay because this is my picture. There's not too many tags on it. It's about less than 20%. So my ad will run normally. So you got to pay attention to this. So make sure you always check first um, using this text overlay, uh, image text check, or you can actually Google it. Google this, for example. Overlay tool to check. Okay. So this is a consideration that you need to consider. Okay, uh, so before, so you've seen an example of um, how how does the um, advertising material looks like, what you need to cover, some recommendations that we provided, and the the, the uh, consideration for the text requirement. Okay, so how do you actually? Uh, the question is, how do you actually launch it? So now you already know, like roughly, like how you can. What are the considerations that you need to have for an advertisement, and you know the requirement. Um, some of the tools that you can actually use to design it, and also uh, what are the key objectives you want to have these four objectives, right? So the next, before you actually start, before I actually show you a demo on how you can actually do it on your own, uh, make sure you have a Facebook page. For example, like this is an example that I have. And you must have a Facebook page on your own. Uh, you also need to be able to create a Facebook Business Manager account and a Facebook advertising ad account, or we call it an ad account. So um, this is a uh, Facebook page. You, it's, you, it's very simple. Just go to Google. You can find out how you can create a Facebook page very easily. Um, then also for this one, for these two, to actually, because you also want to use the Shopline website, you want to connect it to your Facebook page, all right? So um, you need to set this up. If you need to know, is it is the process a little bit uh, extended, so you need to know this is actually there's a FAQ which is called the Facebook Business Extension, which is by Shopline, and it's available for all plans. And we can sh there's an FAQ where we will teach you how to do it. Okay, and we hope this FAQ will be able to guide you through. All right, but if you don't not sure about this, you can you know feel free to ask us um, after this after the session and after you complete the questionnaire, our team will be able to help to guide to actually share with you how you can do it. You know, or, or we can share you the link of the FAQ as well. So I'm just to give you a case study before I start. So this is how I'm. What I'm gonna do is I'll be. I want to be able to create something similar to this, like uh, this magnetic charging cable that I was using before. So I want to do exactly the same uh, ad, like how I can run for beginners like this. Okay. So I'm gonna show you. So uh, before I show you first, um, there are three basic concepts you remember. In so in Facebook ads, there's three stages um, across when you actually create an ad. Or being, and before you launch the ad. So first is actually the promotional activities, uh, which is actually you decide the advertising goals and the objectives of the advertisement, and also the promotional mix. So you, you decide the audience, the budget, and positioning of where you want to place the advertisement to the audience. And the last one is actually advertisement on how you, you decide on the content. So the creative materials, the visuals, the content of the advertisement. Now, remember that the uh, reminder is that these stages, the setting of all these stages are different. They, they serve a different function, but they are actually closely related. So if you make a mistake in a certain level, it may cause the overall advertising to be either ineffective or may not be up to your expectation. So you always have to you know, make sure you double check and go through the, each step by step. Step one, step two, step three. Now, you'll be able to see what I mean by step one, step two, step three. Let me show you how you can quickly uh, go it. So let's see, assuming that I'm using this um, as my demo, Facebook page is called Melly's Fried Chicken, and I want to create an ad. So let's create an ad. So remember, ads management. So yeah, so so don't don't be too worried about this. Um, this Facebook attention to connect this to your Shopline website. We can send you the FAQ over, and you can actually test it out yourself. All right. So here we go. So uh, remember the slide. There's three stages. So it exactly, it reflects on over here as well, as you can see. Okay. So there's campaign, which is this, and you can choose your objective. And uh, this is where you you select the the goals and the objective of why you're doing this campaign. All right, so there's um, three different types. For example, like you want to you want to build awareness. You want to let people know about your brand. 
you know, or you want to do consideration, you want to engage people, you want to build traffic uh, to your to your Facebook page, or you want to build, you want to engage people, you want to engage them in a way that you let them know, hey, what am, what am I doing? You know, um, I have this product, I want to sell this stuff like that. So there's consideration, there's also conversion. Uh, you want to make sure you want to do you know, your, your objective was to do conversion, or you want to do a catalog sale. So um, for this one, sorry, let me just close my that. Just give me a moment. All right. So now, um, objective. The first one is you need to choose your objective. So my objective today I'll be using is actually I want to engage people. So what engage means is that you know you want to get posts, you want to make a post, you know, advertisement. Sorry, not a post, an advertisement, and you want to get people to actually like your advertisement and actually engage onto the content itself. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set here, which is I'm, you can actually set the campaign name. This is for you to do a reference. So let's say I'm going to put my date which is September, 2nd of September and 2020 USB charging cable. Let me just put charging cable. Okay. Now, once that is done, you can move on to the next part. So this is the part where you can actually select um, the marketing objective so that fulfills the promotional activities. Then you want to move on to set your ad account. Okay, sorry, ad account. So make sure Malaysia, Ringgit, Asia, and ad set. Okay, so this is where it comes, this promotional mix comes in, the promotional mix. So you want to be able to set your ad set name. This is also for you to know. Um, today's date, which is 2nd of September, 2020. Right, this is just a demo. Like I'm showing you, you can always change. You can change the set name to make sure that it's the right one. So um, then you move on to audience. So this is where you define who, who you want to see your cut. Who you do you want to see your advertisement? Who do you want to have the people who actually look at your advertisement? So um, since you're actually, if you're just a beginner, like you just started, um, there won't be any custom audience, like you know the ones that you have actually used before. But if you actually have like um, New ones, you can actually use uh, safe audience or any particular audience that you are you, you have already done before. Now, for location um, here, this is where you can target. So you can actually choose where you want to target the people. So let's say if I, I'm I'm actually selling this product, but I want to target people only in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, so you can actually select the location. There you go, and it tells you exactly the coverage of where the ad is going to be targeting. Who are the people around you that's going to be targeting? Okay, then you can also set um, age gap. For example, I know that this cable that I'm selling is targeting people who are from 18 to the age of 35. So I make sure that I do the setting whereby it only targets people who are around 18 to 35. Okay. Now for this, I think let me just put Malaysia. So like Malaysia as an example. All right, so there you go. And then in, you can also select based on gender. It's either you want to target men or you can target women. Now, uh, now I'm using a USB cable, for example. So probably I want to put this all because it applies to everyone who's actually using it. Um, language as well. So now uh, language is important. So why am I saying it's important? For example, if you're actually selling um, ladies' clothing for, Ch for Chinese New Year, uh, you want to target the Chinese audience, a um, local Malaysian Chinese audience, and you're selling um, uh, chi pao, which is like a traditional Chinese dress that people wear usually on weddings or Chinese New Year. Then you want to make sure that you want to type in, you, know, you want to make sure your ad is actually set for Mandarin Chinese. Okay, so once if you actually select, so for my cable, I'm actually targeting a lot of uh, everyone, like regardless of the language. So I'm just going to put save my audience. Okay, then for placements. Now, remember the slide, uh, positioning. So positioning is very important. 
So um, there's two ways you can do it. One is by automatic placement, which is recommended if you're actually maximizing your budget. And this allows uh, Facebook to actually help you to uh, automate and tell you and automatically place multiple of uh, your ad advertisement across multiple locations, the, the suggested locations. Okay, but if you really want to like, you know, really deep dive into it, uh, you can also choose manual placements where you can choose, for example, like uh, in Facebook, Instagram, uh, where do you want to put it? So they also show you like a um, sample where, how is it going to look like? So you can also select, you can tick and tick, for example, like I don't want it to show on Facebook news feed, I can untick it. And you will not show on Facebook news feed. But if I do it, then you will appear over here. So you can uh, tick and uh, tick and untick on the things that, on the places that you want to show or you don't want to show. Okay, but however, as I mentioned, if you're a beginner, maybe you want to try first. If it's a trial and error, just put automatic placement. So it's recommended. All right, so then the other one is actually uh, budget and schedule. So this depends on, um, um, sorry, setting the budget. Yes, correct. So how do you actually, how much do you want to spend? And when would you like your ads to appear? So, um, so remember our objective is to actually engage and you know, you want to set a budget and a schedule for it. You can either set it as a daily or a lifetime, but probably you want to start off with a daily budget. So um, daily budget is a little bit more, uh, it depends on how much you actually you really want to spend and it also depends on the audience size. So you can see here, so if you can see the audience size, there's a, it's either it's a broad or it's specific or it's somewhere in the middle. And this is how much of your reach that you actually uh, be able to reach on a daily basis and number of post engagements that you get. For example, um, it tells you on every day on your your campaign performance and your ex the number of actual post engagement that you get. And it's an average figure. It's an average figure. Okay. The number of reach of people that you can estimate to reach if you actually spend this amount of budget. So um, let's say if you're running as a beginner, uh, maybe you want to try, you know, like a 15 ringgit, for example, 15 to 20 ringgit per day to run an ad, then you can spend it on the daily budget. And this is tells you exactly how much you want to, uh, how much you're going to spend per week. All right. So now, um, as a recommended that we looking at that we would suggest is maybe you can also once you are more familiar you probably can start off as a basic like for example setting 15 ringgit as the start on a day for a daily budget but along the way once you have tested the market you try out like how are people reacting to the product the advertisement and and the actual conversion when people visit your website and the purchase for it then you and you actually get some returns from there maybe you'll be able to actually set a higher budget for it and it actually, when you actually set a higher budget for it, it gives you the, uh, it actually helps you to reach out to more people and a larger audience size and also helps you to engage a little bit more. Okay, so here's this, is, I'm just gonna set as 20 ringgit for now as an, as an average. So then that's roughly how much I'm gonna be spending, it's 148 um, plus the tax is about 448 per week. And on a daily basis, I spend 20 ringgit. And it will help you to reach out to 1.7k to five around average of 1.7 to 5k of reach and about this much of our engagement. Okay. All right. So once I'm done with this, all I'm going to do is click on continue. Now let's move on to the next step. So step three, advertisement. So decide on the content of the app. So this is where uh, the, next, the last part of doing the advertisement. So I'm gonna put my ad name, I'm just gonna set a, a default name for now. Um, 2020, okay. All right, so then over here, I can choose the page. So I'm using Melly's Fried Chicken as an example. All right, and then move on to the next part is you actually, this is where you can actually put in your actual creative or visuals. So if you already have an existing post, you can use it again. Uh, the one that you did before, but since you're just beginning, you're just starting your first one, you can click, on, click at, create that. And then you can select um, the format that you want. Uh, for example, I'm selecting single image or a video, or you can choose a different type. And then move on to media. I'm going to choose, what am I going to put? So I'm going to put, let's say, uh, I'm going to put a video. I'm going to put a video for it. So remember, my demo is actually I'm showing this. Yeah, remember this video? 
So all I gotta do is uh, have to. I'm already. I already have the video file at hand, the, the GIF file. All I gotta do is actually uh, upload it. Let's say this is my video that I want. I'll upload it. Just wait for it. And here are some of the best practices that we suggest you, like the recommended length, 15 seconds or less. You know the size. If it's vertical, if it's full screen, vertical, uh, horizontal, and etc. So just want to wait for it. It's converting. All right, so here we go. So this is how uh, it looks like, and you will also show your preview on the right here. If you go down, like just down here, uh, links, you show your preview over here, and it also shows you like how uh, the preview of different, uh, how does it look like on different part, different um, places. For example, like uh, on the desktop, on the mobile news feed, on Facebook, or and etc. Or mobile marketplace, like the Facebook marketplace, things like that. So it gives you a different point of view on how it looks like. Now let's say I'm using a mobile. So this is where now you have already put up your video. So I want to be able to put in my text. So I've already prepared. Remember the the text that uh, this like this one. So I'm gonna I've already prepared my text. I'm just gonna put it here. Okay. And I want to make sure that I put the link because this is how it kind of looks like now. One of, and customers actually have to click on more to actually see the link. What I want to do is be able to actually move this on the top. Say I put it here. Okay. So once I put this up here, and um, so customers can directly see the link and the information and so on. So this is where you can put the link. And then you want to be able to not only just put these primary texts and also a video to it. You want to be able to remember I said that the end goal is to be able to uh, it actionable so you want to be able to actually make it actionable for your customers so all you got to do is actually click on here you can put a for example like a shop now since you already have your product page on your website this is my product page let me show you all right so this is my product page so i want them to directly actually direct to bring them over to here so it's the same. I'm just going to put the link. And there you go. See? So it directly clicks. When the customer actually clicks on Shop Now, it brings them to the page itself. And they are able to look at the information and also be able to check out from there. All right? So now that is done. Now, um, the last part is also in, within this stage. The last stage is actually conversion you want to be able to know how you can do conversion tracking and etc all right and you know the options on how you can you want to know the data right so Facebook actually does have this function which is actually through Facebook pixel so um, however Facebook pixel is also connected to the uh, Facebook business extension 2.0 so you will be able to have you'll be able to actually should give you the FAQ for this on how you can actually connect this um, Facebook pixel so you in order to actually track, so with Facebook Pixel, you're able to check the conversion. So the number of people, imagine it tells you the number of people actually see it, the number of people actually click on it, and number of people actually went into your website, and the link that you actually put. So you're able to track number of people and their information, and etc. So you can you you may be able to do this, but before you need to be able to actually um, set this up using uh, Facebook Business Extension. So if you're not sure, just let us know. We'd be happy to actually let you know. All right, so once you're done with this, all these three stages of setting, all right, there's campaign, at setting, ads, and it fulfills these requirements, the three stages, this ones. Once you're done, all you got to do is go to the bottom here after tracking, just click confirm, and then you'll be able to, to make the payment for it. So you'll be able to set your country, and you'll be able to choose a payment that you want to make payment for the advertisement. Facebook ads to be launched. Okay, so you can either use debit card, credit card, or even online banking, FPX, Maybank to you, and etc. So it's it's pretty um, pretty useful. It's very useful, and um, of course, like my advice is to make sure because each of the stages are very different. They are very, each of it are very dependent on each other. So you want to make sure that you make it. Uh, you want to do it correctly, and not only that, 
you know, it's not about just that. It's also about like practicing and trying out yourself. Okay, testing it and so on. So this is how, you know what? I actually have a surprise for you. And it's actually a new feature from Shopline, which is actually called the Shopline Smart Ads. And it's actually, what it is actually, as you can see, is actually an intelligent advertising system that is already working and integrated with Facebook. So you saw how I actually show you a demo on how you can use Facebook pay, uh, Facebook, sorry, Facebook ads to create an advertisement. So with this Shopline Smart Ad, you can actually do very similar as well. It's easy, it's fast, and it's more effective. And um, to help you to go, you know, to help your online store to increase your sales in general. And it's, it's functions very similar to the Facebook ads creation. And also has three steps, very simple three steps, which is product selection. You can write a post as in an advertisement post and also um, setting the, do the settings for the audience. All right. So I'm going to show you a demo on how it, fun it works. Now, uh, this is how your dashboard looks like on Shopline. You probably have already tested it out yourself. Um, this is how your dashboard looks like. Now, if you want to use that feature, all you're going to do is actually go to Marketing and Tracker right down here. Marketing and Tracker, and you should be able to see Smart Ads System. All you got to do is to click on this Smart Ads System, Just click on it, and the dashboard will appear by itself. Okay, so now uh, let me remind you that this Smart Ads System is a very new feature that's been launched by Shopline. And if you're really interested to use this, um, it functions very similar to Facebook Ads, If you're and it's connected to it. If you're really interested to use this, um, do let us know. We would be happy to reach out to you and explain to you a little bit more about this. Okay. Now um, back to the topic. Um, so similarly, this is where you can create a campaign. Just all you got to do is click on the blue button here, create campaign, and you can do it for either new customers or you can do it for previous customers that you have already did an advertisement before and you have already targeted them. So you want to retarget them again. Now for my objective here today, as per my demo before, uh, is I want to target a new customer. So I'm going to do is I can click on this one. And um, as you can see here, there's three objectives. First one is actually selecting a product. So you can select a product that you want to feature. Now note that the product are, needs to already be here, huh? and it has to be already um, uploaded on your Shopline website. So anyways, I'm going to choose this, which is the cable that I demoed before um, earlier. And uh, so this is where you can add your mater add material, for example, like your image or your video that you want to upload. And this is it has even has a preview screen that you can actually have a look at it, how it looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna upload my uh, image first. I'm gonna choose the one that I uploaded before, and I'm gonna type in the primary text, which is, for example, I have a primary text prepared just to give you just to give you a demo about it. So here, okay, and then I got a headline, which is, and once you type it, this is where you will appear, and uh, this is an optional description where I add on. Additional sub sub description you can add on for the headline that you want. Okay, so this is how uh, it works in real time. So whatever you make changes, you will the preview will appear and it will show you how it looks like. Okay, and there's some limitations with certain text, so take note of it. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna type this. All I'm gonna do is click on next once I'm done, and this is where you can set the targeting. Okay, so remember, I was, well, this we can set a budget. Remember, I was trying to set a budget of 20 ringgit. Or it could be more, actually. So let's say 50 here. Then I'm going to select the time. When, I, when do I want to start the campaign time? When do I want to end it? It could be a customized date that you want to end the campaign. It's ongoing. Uh, you can choose a location that you want. If it's in Malaysia, which gender you want to target, and which age group that you want to target. So remember, I was targeting 18 to 45. All right, sorry, 35. Okay. And um, there's also more details that you can include as well. Like you can do detailed targeting if you want to do detailed targeting into like different interests, behaviors, and etc. Uh, however, I'm doing a new one. So in and then the campaign details is you can put in you know for example like if you want to record it so say second September uh, USB cable campaign and things like that all right 
Right, so that's pretty much how you can um, set a budget uh, and schedule for your campaigns and also set the audience targeting. So this is a very new feature. If you're interested to use it, let us know. We'd be happy to show you that. And also um, um, for this as well, as you can see, um, this one is definitely more comprehensive. It's a little bit more uh, streamlined as compared to the Facebook ad, which is a little bit more technical and you need to do a lot of testing and trial over there. This one's a little bit more streamlined. It's a bit more easier to use. All you gotta do once you're done, just click on publish and it should be okay. All right, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much how you can do it. Now I've come to the end of the uh, session now. So um, thank you for listening to us and I hope that the, uh, the advice that we gave you in the first part of the session where we talk about like, you know, what are the things that you need to consider in terms of the customer journey experience, the shopping journey experience, what are the stages that you need to pay attention to, and also how do you look into you know, selecting a product, you know, and certain other things, how do you optimize, what are the tools that you can use to optimize your creative materials, and et cetera. So I really hope that you actually took the time to actually go and explore them, if you can. If you need a replay of this video, let us know. And I've come to the end, so now, uh, thank you for staying. So if you want to actually, uh, get the event package, all you gotta do is actually scan this QR code and we'll be able to provide you with the free dropshipping FAQ guideline and also be able to set up an appointment for you, for you to talk to our dropshipping expert to give you a little bit more insights and guidance one-on-one -on -one to talk to you about it. Okay, so all, you're, all what I'm gonna do now is actually have you to fill up this QR code. So just use your, take out your phone, scan this QR code and there will be two questions here. One is in English and Mandarin. So if you are comfortable doing English, do the English one or vice versa the other way around. Uh, if you can't access the QR code, this is the link to it. So just go to your browser and type in this link and you'll be able to access it.